This is, this is a recipe that our great grandmother used to make, our grandmother would make, and then our dad made it for us when we were little. Uh, it is oyster. Hey, carnivore hunters, this is Doug. And this is Rick. So, if you've been following us for any amount of time, you know that occasionally I like to start out with a little joke. I'm not going to tell you one. I'm going to make you read it right here. Uh, so as promised, um, we today we are going to show you a favorite uh, Christmas recipe that that uh, Doug and I grew up eating. It's 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 been a tradition in our family for really for decades, right? Yeah, and uh, so. Uh, we we threw a challenge out there to see who could guess what this uh, recipe was. We gave a bunch of hints. Nobody got it. Um, of course, our channel is still small, but either way, we're we're going to make this recipe for you today. Yeah. Now this is this is a recipe that our great grandmother used to make. Our grandmother would make, and then our dad made it for us when we were little. Uh, it is oyster stew. Uh, now, uh, if oyster stew, we. It's really the most carnivore recipe we could actually think of. If you can hand, if you can handle the dairy, because uh, I know there's some of you out there that can't do dairy, there is nothing more purely carnivore than oyster stew. Uh, what we have is a uh, we're actually going to use three quarts of whole milk. Uh, now, our great grandmother always used raw milk. This is you know that's just how it's traditionally made. Unfortunately, we're in Colorado and kind of hard to get a hold of raw milk unless you own a share of a cow. Here you go. We also have two sticks of our Kerrygold butter here, uh, 32 ounces of uh, oysters. And this is probably the only thing that really isn't carnivore is the Tabasco sauce. Um, it, it, but it's still like, completely, uh, you know, zero carb in it. It does have distilled vinegar, red pepper, and salt. It is optional, but it's we grew up with this little extra spice in it, and it's how we like it. So we are going to include that in here today. Yeah, and and we uh, we've seen a few other recipes online where you can also add celery, and I don't, I don't even remember what else. There's there's some variations out there. Oyster crackers, of course. Uh, being carnivore, you don't want the crackers, right? Um, but uh, there, there's other things if you if you feel like this is too bland for you, but this is how we grew up eating it. And, you know, as I said, our family, the ones that can stomach the oysters, absolutely loves it. And and we didn't even realize how carnivore it was until we were hunting. Mm -hmm. And we always thought this was super bad for you, right? The butter, it's going to clog your arteries and kill you. And then we then second, it was the whole milk. Uh, skim milk was okay somehow, but whole milk is okay. So, right. We're going with we're we're going with all the fat you can get. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So what we're going to start out with here, first step. One one Oops. sec, Doug. Yep. Um, so right. we have uh, these oysters that we got off of Amazon. That's actually uh, chicken of the sea. I I always thought chicken of the sea was just tuna and sardines and you know those kinds of fish. Um, they actually do oysters, and this this came in a twelve pack, uh, ninety six ounces total. Um, I think it was like forty one or forty two dollars. So we got a bunch of extras because we're definitely going to start making this more now that we know it's not bad for you. Yeah, definitely. So step one is very easy. We're going to take a portion of one of these sticks of butter, probably a half, maybe two two thirds, uh, and basically fry up our oysters until. Uh, the edges start to curl in. So we're going to prep that here really quick um, and we'll be right back in a second, kind of show you what that looks like when you're frying up the oysters. Hey, carnivore hunters. My brother is a much better cook than I am, so I'm going to let him take it from here, but I'll be back to test taste it. Test taste it? Hey, you said test taste. <laughs> <laughs> what, do, what do I say? Test taste test. Oh. <laughs> Hey, carnivore hunters, my brother's a much better cook than I am, so I'm going to let him take it from here, but I'll be back to test taste it. 
Taste test. Taste test. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. All right, carnivore hunters. So what we did is we got we have some of our butter here, um, getting that melted, getting it kind of sizzling in there, um, and then I'm just going to add the oysters in. It's kind of a smaller pan. Now, our dad, when we were little, used to actually cut these oysters into smaller pieces. Um, I don't need to do that anymore because um, we'll just eat them whole. But this is kind of a, you're going to do this on kind of a medium heat, maybe medium high. Um, and we're just going to let these oysters until the, basically you're looking for the edges to start to curl in. And once those edges start to curl, you know they're done. And then it'll be time to add them into the stock pot uh, with our milk. So we're going to go ahead and let this continue on cooking here and we'll be right back. All right, carnivore hunters, I'm back here. So um, we've actually had the oysters fried up. It only takes them about 10 minutes before those edges start to curl up. Um, so what I'm going to get started now now is the base, uh, which is going to be with our three quarts of milk. Um, I'm just going to eyeball this one here. Um, it's about three quarters of this gallon. Get this poured in. Now, ordinarily, I would have started this milk at the same time I had the oysters frying, but since we were filming today, um, I wanted to kind of take my time with all of this and make sure we got everything together. So it's about three quarters of that gallon. And then the rest of the butter goes in here as well. And again, this is going to be at a medium to medium, you know, medium, medium, low heat. Most important thing with oyster stew and really anytime you're cooking with milk you got to bring up the milk to heat very very slowly because otherwise you end up with curdled milk and it does not taste very good so we're going to bring this up to heat really slowly i'm also going to add these oysters back in really quick um, like i said ordinarily i would have actually had the started the milk going a little bit while the oysters we're going and I'm splattering all over the place here, but that's okay. We'll clean that up. It's my brother's kitchen after all. So, <laughs> all righty. So again, we're going to get this up and again, bring it up to heat really slowly. Um, really only thing after this, we're going to bring this up to 185 degrees, just using this thermometer. If you have one of the thermometers that you actually put inside the pot, that's even better, the one that can stick there. Um, but again, really key here, you want this to come up to heat very slowly and uh, so you, that we don't curdle. Just kind of stirring it every once in a while as well and looking for that maximum 185 degrees. And then you can kind of come back and add like pepper and of course the Tabasco sauce as well. So uh, we will get this up to heat and we'll be back in just a few minutes. Hey, carnivore hunter. So we just wanted to go over some nutrition uh, with these oysters while, while our stew comes up to temperature. Um, <clears throat> we're, we're not going to go over the milk and the carry, Kerrygold butter, I think most everybody of, pretty well knows. Yeah, if you don't, you should. You look it up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, we we googled the nutrition facts, and these are for Oyster Pacific. I don't know if Atlantic could make a difference. I I doubt it's that big of a difference. So we're just we're closer to the Pacific, so that's what we're going to cover. Um, amount per one medium, fifty grams. How much was in that can, Doug? It's 142 grams, I believe, is yeah. what it calls it. Uh, 142 grams for a serving. Yeah. Um, each one of these cans is considered one serving. Um, again, it's it's up to you how many cans you put in. The original recipe from our great grandma said uh, 32 ounces, Yeah. Uh, which is four of these cans. If you want more, throw more in. Um, honestly, if you want we, less, throw less in. Yeah, we, we seriously considered putting more in tonight just because... We never thought there were enough oysters in there to begin with. Yeah. 
but uh, we, we, we figured to, later. Yeah, for, for filming, we're, we're, we were going to stick to the original recipe. Yeah. So uh, 50 grams uh, per one serving is what this is saying. That, so that that's kind of confusing because mm -hmm. it didn't seem to line up. But uh, according to Google here, uh, your calories is going to be 41 per 50 grams. Uh, your total fat is going to be 1.2 grams, which is 1% uh, of your daily value. And your saturated fat is going to be 0 0.3 grams. Again, 1% 1 1 of your uh, daily value. Cholesterol, 25 milligrams, which is 8%. And sodium... This is an ocean fish, so your sodium is mm -hmm. going to be 53 milligrams, which actually, I don't, that doesn't sound like a whole lot. No, I think I don't, it's, I'm it's not a pretty... nutritionist, so I don't know. Well, I mean, plus, as, as carnivores, we're, try, we're always trying to get more electrolytes anyway, right? So sodium and the potassium as well, that's always something we're trying to get more of. So Yeah, and so sodium, 53, potassium is 84, which uh, looks like that's 2% of your daily value. Um, your total carbs is 2.5 grams. Yeah, that, that one surprised me. I didn't, I, I mean, I guess I, I didn't realize that oysters had any carbohydrates. Obviously, as carnivores, we try to avoid carbohydrates in general, but I'll bet again. You, I'll bet you it's that meaty junk in the middle that yeah. most people, t that tend to make most people hate oysters. Right. <laughs> Either that. They don't chew them. They just let them slide right on down. And I, I love that too. So I, <laughs> I've always loved oysters. Yeah. So you do want to make sure that you're stirring, uh, it, you know, every couple of minutes uh, it, just to make sure nothing's sticking there. Also, you, uh, I, I like to use the thermometer to check periodically just to make sure that the, the temperature, while it's still coming up, is coming up slowly so that we're not burning anything or curdling that milk. Also towards the end is when I'll start to shake in some of the Tabasco sauce because we do like a little extra spice. And then frankly, we usually add a little Tabasco into our bowl as well. Yep. So are you going to stir? No, I, <laughs> I probably should. Okay. And while he continues to stir, I'll finish up this list here. Total carbs is 2.5. Dietary fiber, zip. And your protein is 4.7 grams per 50 grams. Um, vitamin C is 6% of your daily value, iron 14, B6 0, magnesium 2%, calcium 0, uh, vitamin D 0, and I'm not sure I'm pronouncing this right, Doug, co co cobalamin, and we did Google that, that is vitamin D12. I, I don't know why they didn't just say vitamin B12 on this list. They said vitamin B6, but it doesn't matter. How's it looking? It's almost done. All right. We're, we're at about 155 degrees. So, uh, anyways, we wanted to give you the oyster information. Um, check out your your whole milk and your and your butter if you want to. If you're into the macros and micros, um, we're not. We just eat. <laughs> And <laughs> right, pretty much. Um, but I, I'm I'm so excited about this. I, I, this isn't going to be a Christmas Eve meal for me anymore. I'm going to make this probably several several times a year, which is why I bought that bulk uh, Amazon box. Yeah, and super super easy again, guys. Um, I, I mean, it just the hardest part is the fact that you do have to cook it slow. Yeah. So I, I'm drooling. I'm waiting. So, yeah. So uh, we just have a few more minutes until this is ready, and we will uh, bring you back, show you the final product. All right, carnivore hunters, we are about to test our temperature here. We actually got a little distracted, so there we go. 189. Perfect. All right. I can't wait. The only thing I've added to this, I think you guys may have seen me add a little bit of Tabasco. Also did a couple shake, shakes of pepper in here, but we are going to serve up and this will be absolutely delicious. See back the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm so excited. It's been a 
I think I missed the last couple of Christmas Eves because of work or whatever other reason. But I'll tell you what we do need, Doug. A bigger ladle. <laughs> um, well, we, what we need is for you to hurry up so I can get it. All right. <laughs> I want bowl two. Didn't he just say, hurry up? <laughs> Here we go, carnivore hunters. Time to dig in. Let's give this a shot. It's still a little hot. Hmm. Oh, I... As good as I remember. Yep. A little Tabasco. Going to take that over the top. So earlier, we said you could add or reduce the amount of meat. For this recipe, I think I definitely would add just a, yeah, again, a couple of cans, maybe. Yeah, uh, we, we wanted to keep to the original recipe for filming, but I definitely, I mean, we're carnivores, right? You're wanting to get that extra protein in there. So definitely something I would, will probably do next <clears> time <throat> is just to add those extra oysters in there. Aside from that, and just just tastes like my childhood. Yep, I agree. And for you butter lovers, oh my God, you can just see it floating in here. Mm -hmm. Stuck in butter, gal. Got to give this a shot. Because oh. I know you eat all kinds of crazy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, guys, please give this a, sh give this a shot. Um, let us know what you think about it in the comments. Um, like and subscribe. And we will see you next time. Hit that notification bell. Bye, guys.